reviewing the DJI Phantom 3 Professional. And I know there's a lot of reviews out there on YouTube already, and the Phantom 4 was just announced, so I'm going to take this at a little bit different angle. I was brand new to the expensive drones when I got this drone. I've flown little ones, little hubs and brands, and a few off-brands as well. Just the little cheapos, 100 bucks and less. And so I wanted to tell you a little bit about my experience and things I liked about this drone and how easy it really is to use. I know that DJI really targeted it towards the average user, that anyone can pick up the controller and really get phenomenal footage with this drone. And it really is, that is the way it, it worked for me. So a few things that I really like. It's simple to use, easy to set up. The blades just pop on and off. You can see an unlock and a lock in the direction you're supposed to spin them. So you just hold the motor there and it spins right off. And they've got a little color coordinated dot that you need to put on. So you've got your two blacks and your two grays. And then to put them on, you just, oops, wrong way. Spin it back down, make sure it's snug, and you're done. Pull the gimbal guard off, which is right down here. It's this plastic piece that slides off here. I'll leave it on there for now. And then the battery in the back, right here, just pops out. So, I mean, that's as simple as the setup is. And then you got to install the DJI Go app on your Android or iOS device. I used it on an iPad, and that was easy as well. It is overwhelming when you first start up the app because there's so much information there, but once you narrow down the few pieces of information that you really need just to fly, it really becomes quite simple. There's a few of the autonomous features in the app that are just phenomenal, and let me talk a little bit about those right now. I'll swap over so you can see the controller here, because the drone, once you put the blades on, the battery in, take the gimbal guard off, you're pretty much ready to go. As far as the controller goes, this comes folded down like this, your mobile device holder, and pops up and you can put any, almost any size device, it'll take a full size iPad Air, which is what I use in here. And if you want to use a phone, these little guys pop down and you place the phone up in the top part. When I first got it, I was trying to put it in the bottom part and it wasn't working and I ended up figuring out how it was supposed to go. But as far as the controllers go, it's really quite simple. When you turn the app on, the best way to start off is the auto takeoff. And you push the button and the drone will automatically go up to four feet and hover and then wait for direction. And it's super easy to control from there. You don't have to worry about starting the blades, the propellers, and turning them off. When you're done, you just tell it to take off, and when you're ready, you tell it to land. Really, anyone can do it. Once you're in the air, you've got your up and your down, or your throttle and your decelerate the blades, and that'll take you up and down. And then you've got your yaw, or your rotate. This one right here will do your yaw, and that's actually how you would pan the camera, because the camera on the gimbal itself does not turn. And then you've got your turn left and your forward and backwards. So your left and right, forward and backwards. And that's pretty much it. That's as easy as it is to fly. Also to control the camera, you've got your gimbal. This will tilt the gimbal up and down like that. So these other buttons you can largely ignore. You do have obviously your power button when you power it on. You tap it once and then hold it. And then you return to home. If for some reason you lose signal or whatever, or you just want to return to home, you can push that button there. Other than that, the rest of the buttons, you don't really need to worry about too much, unless you want to switch over into the autonomous modes, which is what I would suggest, because you can get some amazing shots with the point of interest or the follow me. Um, for example, this shot that I'm showing right now, I did a point of interest at a little rock I don't want to call it a mountain, but a little rock hill close to my house. And the drone just does a perfectly precise turn and orbit and keeps the camera focused exactly where you tell it to and looks phenomenal. Now to do that, you need to switch the controller, this little button up here. But you switch this over all the way down and that switches it into the mode where you can use the uh, the built-in features like point of interest, follow me, waypoints and stuff like that. And then it's, as, then it's as simple as tapping on the screen the point of interest, setting your return to home elevation, and getting above whatever it is you want to orbit. You set that, take the drone out, whatever, however far out you want it to go, set that and tell it to go. Then you can adjust the speed. Super easy, super simple, and gives you amazing shots. Here's another one 
just circling my house. And I mean, it takes just a few seconds to set up and it's just amazing footage. Now another thing that's really cool and easy, well, and I say easy for beginners, it's, it doesn't require much post-processing, but you can just take some still images if you switch it over to still images. Um, it does have the auto exposure bracketing, so AEB setting. It does have an HDR setting, but if you want real good looking HDR photos, go to the AEB setting, put it to five, so it takes, that means it takes five different pictures at five different exposures really quick and then you can take those and post process them later on the computer and I use Photomatics and just put them in and take the defaults and it really looks phenomenal for example here's a picture that I just recently took and this is all defaults I just snapped the picture put it in Photomatics and it came out with this with the particular effect that I had chosen so super simple to do here's another one they look phenomenal they look professional and they're really easy to do, even for beginner, for beginners. Let me talk for just a second about how terrified I was to fly this thing initially. It's a $1,300 drone, and you think, if this thing falls out of the sky, I'm hosed. Because one of the things, if you look on Amazon, the reviews for DJI service are awful, even with the 12-month warranty. There's all sorts of horror stories about them out there. So, I actually found a company called Neary Aerial, which does crash protection for your drone. And I called up the owner, Matt, talked to him for a few minutes, and felt really confident in putting my trust in that company to protect my drone in the event of an accident or a crash of some sort. Here's the website you can go to. I'm by no means sponsored by them, but it's something that took the burden of flying this right off my shoulders. I could sleep better at night knowing that if something happened, I was protected and their service is phenomenal. Lastly, one thing that I have done a few times and just wanted to mention that, you know, they, they hype up the light bridge and under optimal circumstances it can go up to five kilometers. It must be similar to, to like uh, walkie-talkies where they can go up to 50 miles in optimal circumstances, but you know I've tried a few times and gone out just here in my little suburb of a, of a city. There's not a lot of interferences that I can imagine even out in a, where my folks live, a small town out in the country. I was able to take it a, just over a mile before I started to get you know, a little warning saying the transmission wasn't great, and that makes me really nervous so I come back. Maybe I just need to just go for it and go out further and not worry too much about it, but even with my crash protection and whatnot, I don't trust it that much. So I've only gone out a mile, and that was even with my amplifiers on. So I haven't taken it three miles, I'm sure some people have, but don't plan on getting three miles wherever you're at. I think it has to be pretty optimal circumstances to get three miles. Other than that, this drone is awesome. To watch it fly is awesome. The photos and the video that it gets are phenomenal. So if you have any questions about the Phantom 3 Professional, I'd be happy to answer. Feel free to comment. Um, I do also have a Phantom a channel where I've been posting some of my videos. I'll put that in the link below. And if this was helpful, click like below. And like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to comment. Subscribe to my channel if you like this video and want to see more like it. And otherwise, thanks for watching.